price is too high, we have a surplus. If price is too low, we have a shortage. Now, what happens with a price floor or a price ceiling? These are terms that you're going to have to be familiar with. And there's a lot of misconception just in terms of conventional wisdom about what a floor or a ceiling actually means. And it can be a little bit confusing the way some books explain it. So I definitely want to do this with you. And again, we've got our equilibrium price, our equilibrium quantity, and our happy little supply and demand, Keteris Paribus. We haven't monkey with it yet. I have now, a quick question. Sure. That dot in the middle, is that where the price is right? Or something. And the, the demand curve, is that where the little guy goes up the mountain and then he falls off? The little yodely guy? Yodely, 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 Okay. I'm going to cut all that crap. Good, because nobody... Yodely, 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 yodely. Or Plinko. Shut up. Besides, you wouldn't want to like, advertise for Do you mind? No, I don't mind. I could do this all day. Please. Go ahead. All right. So your equilibrium price is your point of market efficiency. Now, what if your point of market efficiency isn't really making anyone happy? Let's say, for example, that we're talking about... Um, agricultural products, where if they have a really good year, it drives the market price down to a point where if the farmers are actually selling the product at the market price, they would all go bankrupt because they can't make enough money to stay in business. At that point, you might have the government step in and take some measures to shore up or bump up the market so that people can actually make a living. So let's say, for example, that the government puts a price floor on tart cherries. That's a market that's in trouble in the United States right now. To be effective, a price floor has to be above the equilibrium. So let's put the floor right here. The floor is high. Okay? Now, what does that mean? The government has imposed this as a price minimum. That means that the price cannot be lower than the floor. Megan Percival, please call the main office. All right. You starting back at now, what does that mean? The government has. Imposed. Okay. So what does that mean? The government has imposed a minimum price. It means that the price can be above the floor. It cannot go below the floor. So anything up here is fine. This is above our market equilibrium, so that is an effective price floor. So what would you expect to have happen in a market like this where we have a price floor imposed? Well, just like we saw a minute ago, you have a gap between demand and supply. What do you have here when supply is greater than demand? You have a surplus. And in the case of tart cherries in the United States, where we have this massive surplus, the government has told farmers to just destroy the cherries to bring the price up. Very depressing for the farmers. Uh, this was actually... Um, in the national news a few weeks ago. Very, very depressing. It's hard for them to say, look at everything I worked for. I had a great year, and there it is rotting on the ground. But if the price doesn't come up, they can't make a living. It's The way we have our farm market structured is kind of screwed up that way. All right, so price floor says that is the imposed minimum. Now, what if we're talking about a price ceiling? To be effective, a ceiling must be below the equilibrium price. There's your ceiling. Now, when might people be interested in a price ceiling? When gas was $3.49 a gallon a couple of years ago, there were people all over the country screaming for price controls on gasoline. What that would have done is mandate that the price 
could not be higher than the ceiling. Even though the market price maybe was at 350, the government might have said, okay, it can't go above three dollars. So the ceiling is an imposed maximum. The floor is an imposed minimum. Which sounds a little backwards if you're looking at it, you think a ceiling, the ceiling's up here. No, it's backwards. The floor's high, the ceiling's low. The ceiling is a maximum, the floor is a minimum. Now, why does this create market inefficiencies? Because if the government has imposed that level and the market changes such that the market price is actually below the ceiling, then producers could continue to charge the ceiling price and rip off consumers, which is what would happen. And that sucks for consumers because they're losing money when, in reality, had the markets been willing to adjust, they would have gone below that. Gas prices have gone below $3. They've been below $3 for a long time. But once that law is passed, it takes a long time to change that. So that's a problem with market inefficiencies. Now, let's talk about something like the minimum wage. The minimum wage is a price floor for labor. Now, if the minimum wage is actually above the equilibrium, then that says, if we're talking about a labor market, that the supply of labor, the number of people who want to work, is greater than the demand for labor, the employers who want to hire them. What that does is create a black market for labor where people work off the books, they work for cash, they don't file taxes, bad for the economy. Now, another option, another option with minimum wage, for example, talking about floors and ceilings and misconceptions. And the labor market is interesting because it gives us an opportunity to look at households as the suppliers, in this case the suppliers of labor, when we're used to looking at them on the other side of the market. So let's say this is our floor, our minimum wage. If it is above equilibrium, it causes unemployment. Unemployment is bad. It's bad now. Not a good thing. Now, what if, in fact, the minimum wage is below the equilibrium? What if the average wage that people make around the country is actually higher than the imposed price floor? What if it's really down here? This is our second option for the minimum wage. What if it's actually down here? Well, in that case, we have demand higher than supply for labor. There'd be a labor shortage. If people were actually getting paid that price, but if they're already getting paid up here, a price floor that is below the equilibrium isn't going to have an effect because this tells us that most people are already getting paid this much. They're not going to be willing to work as many hours way back here. So at its worst, the minimum wage causes unemployment. And at best, it has no impact on the market because it's too low. And that's the reality of how that works. This idea of paying people a living wage, you may have heard that political expression, it's a great idea, but it's just not feasible in the market. 